This event was sold out in less than 35 days. I want to thank all of you guys for coming out here. He's a sharpshooter, and he's here to give you no BS. So please, give him some energy as we introduce Ryan Stuman Hardcore Closer. What's up, everybody? Y'all fuck my music up. That's yeah, they fucked the music up. That's the All right, we're going to start, start over? <laughs> no, we good. We good. This is what we do, man. When shit goes that way, we roll with it, baby. What's up, everybody? I always wanted to do that, you know, like that's my favorite thing of hosting these events is getting up here and just telling them like, you know, cut it. So uh, thank you guys for coming here, man. That was amazing to see that some of you came from other countries. Some of you drove six, seven, eight, ten hours all over the world. Dude, that is absolutely amazing and I'm grateful for you guys. And I've got an hour with you and I'm going to make it worth every minute of it. This is one of the times with one of the speakers that you don't want to be staring at your phone. You don't want to miss this. I can literally change your life, and I'm going to today if you'll give me this opportunity. There's a reason why I'm up here hosting this event with Josh. There's a reason why these speakers are here. I've been in this circle for a long time. I've helped a lot of people make a lot of money, and I'm going to tell you a story today, and I'm going to tell you how to live your dream life every single day, but not in some bullshit law of attraction secret way. Okay, I'm going to tell you the real way this shit on the planet works, the stuff that they don't even tell you on InfoWars. But once you hack this code, it will change your life. And I'm going to give that to you today. Do you want it? Yeah. How bad do you want it? Do you want that? If I could change your fucking life today, the pain, the suffering, the people that broke your heart, the lack of money, all that shit. If I could show you how to take that away and never deal with it again, do you want that today? Yeah. That's the fuck I'm talking about. Perfect. We're going to have a good time then. So let's, let me give you a lesson in physics here, and I'm going to tie all this together. We have a motto in our office. I'm from Dallas, Texas, born and raised, still live there. My office is there. Who knows what that is? We have a, uh, that's it, fuck your excuses. That's our motto in our office, no excuses. 11 years ago, less than 11 years ago, I walked out of the federal penitentiary with $25 to my name. I drove a Rolls Royce to the fucking airport and got on first class flight to get here today. I have a McLaren, a mansion, a beautiful wife, and I don't say that shit because none of that fucking really matters. I'm just telling you, I turned a real fucking penny into 20 million in a real fucking short period of time, and I'm going to show you and teach you today how I did this. But here's the thing, it didn't happen overnight. I didn't log into the internet and get rich overnight. I didn't become the hardcore closer overnight. Matter of fact, I didn't give that name to myself. The sales community gave it to me, and if you know anything about nicknames, if they give you a cool one, just go with that shit. <laughs> the next one could be real fuck up, and it could stick, <laughs> right? So the reason why I share this with you is I focus on making power moves. That's how I built my entire business. That's how I've done my entire life. I literally, less than 11 years ago, had nothing. I had to move in with my mama, and we don't even talk anymore. That's how bad things were for me. I left the halfway house, moved in with my mom. I built a business back up in the mortgage industry, and in 2010, a law was introduced into Congress, which President Obama eventually signed, called the Dodd-Frank Act. 2009, the worst year to be in the mortgage business. I get out of prison 2008, go back to work in the mortgage business. I went for firearms trafficking, so they were unrelated. And uh, Texas, we like guns, you know what I mean? <laughs> it's like, we like guns. Sometimes the government doesn't like the guns that we like, you know, and so some shit happens. And so, anyway. Uh, so Obama passes this law and I lose my ability to originate mortgages. I went from making 300 grand a year, fresh out of prison, $300,000 a year. I don't have a diploma. I don't have a degree. I don't have any of that shit. And they take my license away from me because I'm on federal parole and the license become federally licensed instead of state. So I got into this internet shit cause I, I didn't have any other choice. I needed something that didn't require a license. I needed something that didn't have a boss something that would allow me to be free, something that wouldn't judge me because of my background, and you have that same opportunity. 
doesn't matter if you were born poor, doesn't matter if you were born rich, doesn't matter if you were born smart, doesn't matter if you're going to be d- born dumb. I'm going to tell you about some dumb people today with a lot of money. None of that matters. What matters is your ability to make it all equal and go get as much as you want no matter what. And we live in a country, especially those of you that live here in America, we live in a country where that's possible. We live in a country where me, a convicted felon that's been adopted, that I've died, I've overdosed on drugs, I've had more problems. I'm a prolific fuck up. If you look up fuck up on Google, I'm pretty sure we SEO'd it to where my name shows up first, right? But that's how you get experience. I'm not ashamed of that. I did all these experiments in my life. Some worked, some didn't. Turns out guns didn't work that well for me. But I learned from that shit. And that's how you become an expert. You do experiments so that you can gain some experience so that ultimately you have enough experience to become an expert. You see how that's related? A lot of people are scared to go out there and experiment. I've risked my life for this shit, my freedom for this shit. I've survived divorce. I've had to, I've had to go to events and work at times when it was my son's birthday. But I'm going to tell you the stuff today that's allowed me to build the dream life that pretty much anybody, I believe, would trade places with me. And I'm going to show you guys how I built it. So first of all, let's take a lesson in physics. I'm a salesman first and foremost. I've never had a salary job my entire life. If it didn't pay commission, I didn't want it because I don't want anybody putting a limit on what I do. And I know I have the ability to sell. And now I also have the ability to generate leads. And when you can generate your own leads and close your own sales, you can go fucking get a job or create a job anywhere, anytime, any place. Think about that. If I'm a salesperson and I show up to any job and I have my own book of business that I bring along with me, dude, it's not even a question of an interview. It's when can you start and when can we get a hold of those good leads you got, right? That's how it works. You become the most powerful thing there is when you can generate your own leads and close your own sales. Doesn't matter if you own a business, doesn't matter if you're just a salesperson, but when you can master those two skills, the game changes. So let's talk about that. Hopefully this marker writes better than the other one. Write this down, power versus force. I have honestly never spoke at an event holding a handheld mic before. Shit's kind of fucked me up a little bit. So I feel like a stand-up comic, like I should be up here telling more jokes because I got this microphone. Yeah, I got, I got a good joke. So if your best friend's getting married for the second time and you are the best man at the second wedding, again, is it okay to start the speech with, welcome back, everybody? All right, so now that we laugh a little bit, power versus force. Okay, most people say they want to do power moves, but they won't. Most people end up spending their whole life forcing things to happen for them, right? Let's think about sales. Daniel was up here talking about sales. I like sales pretty good. What would be some force moves in sales, right? First of all, cold calls would be forced. I don't know about you, but I don't want to talk to anybody that doesn't want to talk to me, and I don't even want to talk to most of them. (laughs) right? Like they say 84% of all phone calls go unanswered. So why would I cold call somebody? That sounds to me like an 84% waste of my fucking time, which is very expensive, right? I mean, we, that's, we, that's the only thing. I can always go get more money. I can always go find more love, right? There's plenty of it in Vegas. I watched a prostitute walk out of the bathroom with an old man earlier. There, (laughs) only in Vegas, folks. And so probably not, probably happens in other places too. But I don't want to talk to people who don't want to talk to me, and I don't want to waste my time. I can always go get anything else. Even the loss of a loved one, I can always go get anything else, but I can't get more time. So force is cold call. Think about it. You're forcing someone to pick up a phone. You're forcing them to hear your pitch. You're forcing them to rethink. You're forcing them to want your product. Fuck, that sounds like a lot of work, doesn't it? I mean, to me, it sounds like a hell of a lot of work. I don't want to do it. I haven't done it since 2004. Next thing is door knocking. See, here's what happens. And there's a lot of young folks in here. I'm almost 40 years old. There's a lot of young folks in here. And here's what happens. You start on the job, and the sales manager, who hasn't really ran a sales pipeline in 30 years, tells you, here's the phone book. What you got to do is you got to go out and you got to meet these people. Just drop by their office. Just talk to them. Just get them on the phone. Just cold call them because they don't know the fucking answers because the last time they did sales, that's what you did. Right? Facebook wasn't around back then. Instagram wasn't around back then. You wanted to find people, you looked them up in the fucking yellow pages. So they don't know to tell you this new age shit that I'm about to share with you. And the problem is sometimes when you drop the shit that I'm about to share with you to them, it's so far over their head they don't even get it until you start to make a lot of money from it. So check this out. Door knocking is forced. Spam emails is forced. Right? Somebody sending you direct messages through Facebook all the time. Buy my shit. For me on Instagram, I don't know if y'all get this, 
but it's, would you like to buy more followers today? <laughs> or we can get you a verified profile badge. It's like, dude, I didn't ask for that shit. Why are you raping my DM over here? So these are forced moves. Now, here's the thing about force. It's effective. It's just not efficient. Right? If I want to force this thing to fall over, that's effective. And force happens immediately. If I want to touch this thing and push it back, that force actually happens immediately. The problem with power and the power moves that I'm about to share with you, they don't happen overnight. But when they do happen, power is powerful, right? Think about it. The most powerful thing that we can probably think of would be what? What do you think the most powerful thing is? Ma'am, front row. What did you say? Time. What do you say? The most powerful thing you can think of. What do you think it is? I would say the sun, wouldn't you? I mean, it powers our whole planet. Like, everything revolves around that thing. Think of how powerful the sun is, right? The sun is everything. If without it, we wouldn't exist. The universe wouldn't exist. The sun powers everything. It took 4.6 billion years to get to that point to where it could do that, to generate that massive amount of power. So I want you to think about something. Most people live their life doing things forcefully, forcing someone to fall in love with them by acting like they're someone they're not. Nobody's ever done that in here, huh? Funny how you open the door on the first date. On the 10th date, you're like, get your ass in there. We got to go. Get your purse. Did you leave your fucking purse again? So most people force their way through life. And force is effective. It's not efficient. But here's the thing. Power takes time. So what would be some power moves? If I'm going to start my own business, the old school way to force things to happen, cold call, door knocking, spam, the list goes on and on, right? The new way of doing things is making power moves. What's a power move? A podcast. That's a good example. You know how much it costs to start a podcast? Zero dollars. In 2011, I ran a podcast called the Rockstar Closer Radio Show. I didn't even realize it was a podcast. I would go, I set a recurring call every week, and I sold cars at the time. Uh, my wife was pregnant with our oldest son, and uh, I worked at a car dealership selling cars to make sure that we had insurance. It was an interruption in my entrepreneurial journey. And every Wednesday, like clockwork at 1 p.m., my friend Travis is at the back of the room right now. He'd been in the car with me doing this. I would go to the car, and I would record a podcast. I'd go sit in there, and I'd record it on my phone. I would dial into the number that I had the recurring appointment with, enter my PIN number, and just talk into my phone. Sounded like shit, and about 20 people a week listened to it. But guess what? Every now and then, some of those 20 people would hit me up and buy stuff from me. They'd buy cars from me. They would hit me up and ask for referrals to mortgage business. So I knew I was on to something. And here's the thing. To us, we're like, ah, oh, it's just a podcast. You're just talking into your phone. They don't know that. To outsiders that aren't in this industry, they see it as like you're behind a studio microphone somewhere with like the Rush Limbaugh golden microphone and shit. And there's wires everywhere and all these graphics. And, you know, here I am just in the front seat of the car. They don't know, right? But I'm creating the illusion. We called it the mobile studio. I'm back again this week in the mobile studio here. It was my fucking car. So think about that, podcast. But here's the thing. I've been, I've been on over 1,000 podcasts, and they don't all catch traction, and the shit doesn't happen overnight. I've recorded, I think, 280 episodes of my Rewire podcast. If you don't listen to that, you should. First thing in the morning, wake up, put me in your ear. Give me the first five minutes of your day. I'll rewire your mind. I'll motivate you. And if you give me 30 days, starting with episode number one, and listen for 30 days straight, first five minutes every morning, you'd be a different person in 30 days. I've done 158 episodes of the Hardcore Closer podcast. It wasn't until I got to about episode 100 that we started getting hundreds of thousands of views and downloads every single month. It took a while, right? Because it takes a while for power to build. But now it's powerful. I get four or five leads every single day from people listening to my podcast. Hey, how do I join your program? Hey, how do I get involved in this, right? Because they... See, the power, the thing about power is force, I have to bring it. Power attracts. You see the difference? Kings are powerful people. Queens are powerful people. They attract, right? Power attracts. Force repels, okay? Another thing that's powerful is starting a blog. I have hardcorecloser.com. I uh, registered that on GoDaddy in 2011. It was in November of 2011. I've been blogging since November of 2011, three, four, five times a week consistently. It's the most consistent thing that I have ever done in my entire life. You know what? For a long time, nobody listened to my website. 
Turns out it was not a good idea for SEO to put hardcore in the URL of my website. Who'd have fucking guessed, you know? And I used to get dudes that would message me, he's like, man, you fucked up my night. I was going to look for porn on the internet and I found your website, now I wanna go drink coffee and go to fucking work in the morning. <laughs> True story, <laughs> lots of them still. But it took a while. I've got 2,500 blog posts that I've written on hardcorecloser.com. Like I said, it's the most consistent thing I've ever done. Every month we get 17,000 leads from this thing. Leads, not just traffic. We're talking leads that come in from this. I'm sorry, 1,700. I said added one zero too many. 1,700 leads every single month come in from that organically. Took a while to get there, but I'm glad I made the power move. The next thing is getting PR. You guys want to be featured in Forbes? I've been featured in Forbes over 100 times. I've been an entrepreneur. Entrepreneur actually wrote an article uh, about me going from the penthouse or from the penitentiary to the penthouse. I've been in Huffington Post, you name it. I've been in the street.com, Wall Street Journal, everything, and all for free. Would you guys like to know how to do that, to make some power moves where you can get free PR? So there's this website, write this down. There's a website, it's H-A-R-O, and the URL is called Haro. The URL to get there is help a reporter out. I'll write it down here. H-A-R-O, if you just Google Haro, it'll show up. But it's helpareporterout.com. There you sign up as a source, and you sign up under everything. Don't just try to pick what you might be an expert at because you don't know how people might category, uh, categorize the stuff coming to you. you. Go there, check every single thing, and they'll send you two emails a day where they're looking for people to give them insight on news stories. What you also do is you go set up a Google alert for your name so that every time one of those publications picks you up and mentions your name, Google lets you know so that you can then turn around and share it on social media and tell all your friends, like, look, I was featured in Forbes. Look, I was featured in the street.com. All that's free. It doesn't cost a fucking dime. Like, how gangster is that, right? You can just go out there and get PR on yourself, and, and you don't have to be a millionaire. You don't have to have a huge Instagram following. Just become a local expert. They ask questions about e-com and about real estate investing and about software and Amazon and all the shit that you guys are into all the time on there. You can get two or three emails a day from them and they make it easy. All you gotta do is click a button and reply to the email with whatever your quote is. Super easy. So getting free PR. Another power move is setting up a video blog on YouTube, right? You make an eight minute plus video two or three times a week, upload it on YouTube. Here's the thing, it doesn't have to be all fancy. I know you see some of Josh's videos or maybe some of my videos or some of Jason Stone's or Bradley's and some of the other people up here. You see our videos and you go, damn, you know, I gotta get my video production skills up like that, man. These guys got all these graphics and drones and all that shit, you don't need that. People wanna look at your reality. And so if you just create a video blog about the shit that you're doing. If you think it's exciting, chances are so will the people in your audience because like attracts like. So if you're interested in it, your audience is most likely interested in it as well. Take a couple times a week, shoot videos. I've got over 2,500 videos on YouTube. I didn't get to be the person I am standing on the stage today because it just happened overnight. 2,500 of anything, fuck, I could have fucked up 2,400 of them and the last 100 would still be damn good. You know, because it's all the practice and repetition. Matter of fact, I've done it so many times, I'm more comfortable talking to a camera than I am a real person, right? Because you don't see facial expressions and shit in cameras. They just stare at you no matter what. It's a lot easier. But setting up a video blog on YouTube. These are the things that are power moves. These are the things that get you recognized, right? You think about Ed Milet is a good friend of mine. And last April, I was actually staying here in this hotel. I was speaking at Marshall Silver's event. And uh, Ed had just launched his podcast like maybe two or three weeks before and we were on the phone and he was talking about, you know, hey, when we do this, we're going to make power moves. We're going to come out with a podcast and we're going to start dropping our information on social media. He didn't hit me up and say, hey, man, when, you know what? I'm going to go into the uh, coaching space finally and uh, we're going to go knock on people's doors. We're going to cold call a bunch of people who don't want to talk to us. And we're going to go spam everybody on social media we can so that we fill this group up. Didn't happen like that. He automatically knew to go out there and make power moves. And so I see a lot of people that are in this industry running their head into the wall over and over and over again because they're trying to force things to happen for them in life. Anybody, if you're honest, you feel like you, try, you really live a life of force instead of power, it's okay if you raise your hand. I'm going to help you out. I'm going to help you out today. 
I got you. So you guys understand this, right? So, so what you need to do, before I move on to the next part here, what you need to do, your homework, whether you do it tonight, this week, up there at the penthouse with us later, is you need to write down like, who, like what you sell, who you sell it to, and what are the power moves that you can do to get attention to them, right? Because like if you sell to older people, right, they're probably going to be on Facebook. If you sell to younger people, they're probably going to be on Instagram. If you sell to younger people, they probably consume videos. If you sell to older people, they probably read blog posts, right? Figure out what your audience does and the power moves that you need to make to align yourself there. Or you could just be like me and do it all. I said, fuck it. Before there was Grant Cardone doing all this stuff or anything, or even I don't even think Gary Vee, or at least I didn't know of him yet. I said, fuck it, I'm going to do it all. We have all this shit available to us, like at, at our disposal to use. Like, why, I'd be crazy not to start a podcast, not to do a blog, not to create sales funnels. Not, I'd be crazy not to do that shit. It's available, and it doesn't cost millions of dollars to do it. Fuck, I'm going to do it all. One of them, like, I grew up on a farm, and we used to catfish. And you never knew what those lazy bastards were going to bite. So you'd throw four or five fishing poles out there just to see which one hit it. Eventually, one of them would catch a fish. And sometimes two of them, you'd lose a pole. But eventually, one of them would catch a fish. But you had to put multiple lines out there to be able to attract them. It's the same thing. You don't, like, you don't need to be all in on just one social media channel. You need to do Instagram. You need to do LinkedIn. You need to do Facebook. You need to do YouTube. You need to do all of them on a regular basis. Because if not, once your competition starts doing that, you're going to be in trouble because right now my competition, I've outcontented all of them. There's 243,000 results for my name if you search me on Google. I created most of them. <laughs> Ain't nobody talking about Ryan but Ryan, damn it. But at the same time, I, dude, somebody getting into the game right now, they're going to have a long time before they catch up to me. But there was a time when I looked at some of the people that I've passed now because they took their foot off the gas and didn't keep up with the content coming out. And I've stayed on it and I've passed up some of them. So as long as you don't quit and you just keep distributing your content out there, you'll win. I'm glad y'all dig this. All right. So let me give you a strategy that works for your content, right? Like this is a foolproof strategy. It has been proven time and time again for centuries, but yet the majority of people fuck this up. And this is how we got the name to this event, M3. That stands for the media marketing method. Ever since Egyptians were writing newspapers and hieroglyphics on uh, papyrus paper back in the pyramids. Damn, that was a hell of a tongue twister now that I got that out. Back in the pyramid days, they would write 80% of their content as proclamations and 20% as call to actions. You think about a newspaper. It's like 80% articles you want to read, 20% ads, right? You think about TV. 80% of it's the show you want to watch, 20% of it is commercials. You think about the radio, 80% of the time you're listening to it, it's music. Unless you live in Dallas, it's commercials. But 80% of the time, it's music. 20% of the time, it's commercials. If you think about Google, 20% of the thing is, uh, you know, the, the paid ad search. 80% is the organic results. Facebook, Instagram, five or six posts, and then you've got an ad coming behind it, right? You see a pattern here, right? 80% content for your audience to keep them entertained, 20% to pay the bills. This has been proven across every platform, every, ever done any advertising, ever. Like I said, TV, radio, magazines, newspapers, they all follow this process, but yet most of us hadn't picked that up. Most of us hadn't realized that the media has a specific way they do ads, and if you just follow their process, because success leaves clues, all you got to do is pick them up and take action with them. If you just follow their process, it changes the game for you. So again, I had you identify your audience and where they would like to consume that content. Now you gotta figure out what would they like to consume? What would entertain them? It doesn't even have to pertain to your business. Think about Kylie Jenner, right? She's the world's youngest billionaire. Most of her posts are just pictures of her, right? Like, you know, pushing her lips up or, you know, putting her ass, you know, all that typical Instagram shit, right? Most of her posts are that. And that's what people wanna see. They wanna see what car she's driving, what clothes she's wearing, everything else. And then about 20% of the time, she'll say, hey, go buy my Kylie Jenner makeup lip gloss combo pack or whatever, and millions of people will head right over there and buy from her. Same thing happens with any of us doing this. 80% of my content, if you look at my Facebook or my Instagram, 80% of my content is just to entertain the audience, talking about things that are trending, things that affect the people that I work with, things that are funny, shit like that, to keep them entertained because our social media channel is truly a channel. 
Think about like the TV box, your cable box at home. When you log into that, that thing has thousands of channels, right? But you only watch probably five or six, right? I know I log into mine, I only watch CNBC, Comedy Central, and like maybe one other channel. I got thousands of options, but I'm only choosing about three to check out. It's the same way with social media. Someone logs into Facebook, there's five, 6,000 channels they can check out. You want them to be, you want to be one of their favorites. You want them to go to your channel and say, hey, what's Ryan doing today? Oh, hey, I wonder what Suman's posting about. Like, I'm so ingrained in my audience with this shit that I know that my audience wakes up early in the morning. I like motivated people. The people that I deal with, they're very motivated. They're driven. They're up early. Most of them are hitting the gym first thing in the morning. And so what do I do? The first thing every single morning, I write a long motivational post to get them started for the day, something that's going to inspire them. I know when somebody wakes up 5, 6 o'clock in the morning and they get on Facebook, they're not looking to get in their back pocket in their wallet and enter their credit card to buy some shit. It's too early for all that. It's too early for me to be in their ear selling first thing in the morning. So instead, I contribute value to them by trying to inspire them for the day. About the end of the day for me, 4 o'clock, I know my audience has worked their fucking ass off. I know they've been at work all day and hadn't even had a chance to look up. Why? Because I'm ingrained in their minds. What do I do? I post something funny at the end of the day. Lightens the mood, you know, makes them feel good at the end of the day. I don't even make offers for people to buy shit from me until about 8 o'clock at night. And I make offers about every other day. I post two or three times a day. 80% for them, 20% to pay the bills. It's real simple. You don't have to recomplicate this shit, okay? So now that I taught you a little bit about power moves and the way that the media works this stuff, who would like to hear about a business that is changing the game that anybody can do from anywhere. If you truly want to live a laptop, laptop lifestyle, no e-commerce needed, none of that, that's all great. I dig it. I got e-commerce too. But I'm saying if you want something that's so fucking super simple and such high demand right now that people will throw money at you. All right, that's what I'm talking about. Keep in mind what I just taught you, okay? Who are the four richest people in the world? Bill Gates, who else? Jeff Bezos, who else? Warren Buffett, who else? That's it. Those are the four richest people in the world. Besides having a fuck ton of money, what else do they have in common? Probably. Influence, probably. Right now, they're all making their money from data. Think about that. How's Facebook get paid? Senator, we run ads. Right? Think about it. Amazon, how's he, how's he get paid? How does data work for Amazon? Oh, you just bought a Dallas Cowboy jersey? Would you like a, a rope and a chair to kick out from under yourself, too? Right? They suggest other shit. Few cowboy fans got that shit. The rest of them, you're just like, I don't know. Fucking being a cowboy fan sucks. It's tough. <laughs> so here's the thing. Jeff Bezos, he has data. And they know that when you buy a toothbrush, you might buy a toothpaste. And if you buy toothpaste, you might buy what? What else would be logical? Floss, Floss right? So think about that. So we got Zuckerberg. We know Bezos is the richest person on the planet right now from data, being able to monetize data. Okay? We know that Zuckerberg is the fourth richest person on the planet because he's monetized data. It's a free site. They don't charge us to be on there. Think about it. You think, well, what about Bill Gates? How is he dealing with data? You ever been to the mall and there's like an Apple store and the line is wrapped around the fucking building, right? It's, not, it's just a regular Tuesday. There's not even a new phone coming out or no shit. They got 50 employees in there with tablets like running around giving people slips and stuff. And you look across the hall to the Microsoft store and you go, damn, Bill Gates must be hard up right now. There is nobody in the Microsoft store ever. I don't think I've ever even seen somebody that works in there. You might as well just set it up like kiosk at McDonald's. You just go in there and pick what you want because nobody's going in there. So how the hell is Bill Gates still worth $50, $70 billion? Dude, Microsoft's been collecting data on their servers forever, and they sell it all B2B. If you're a huge business like Cisco or something like that, you can come in and just buy blocks of freaking data from Microsoft to be able to do your stuff. They're selling data. Why? Because they spent the time to collect it. Lastly, you think Warren Buffett. Warren Buffett's known for being a stock investor. How the hell is he making money on data? Matter of fact, last year I had the esteemed pleasure of taking a private jet to Omaha, Nebraska to the Berkshire Hathaway meeting. It was pretty damn cool to be in the room with Charlie Munger, Bill Gates, and Warren Buffett, you know, before it's too late, because Warren will be 90 this year, I believe. And so, uh, and Charlie will be 94, Charlie Munger, his partner. So it's really cool. But think about it. Warren Buffett, how's he making money from data? Well, first of all, he owns this place called Nebraska Furniture. There's one in Texas, of course, and you can fit six Ikeas inside this place. You ever been in an Ikea? It fucking takes two days to walk out of there. You got to go through six of them through Warren Buffett shit. 
and they have these eyes in the sky, kind of like they have here in Vegas, and digital price tags on everything. And these eyes in the sky scan over 20,000 websites every 10 seconds to make sure that Nebraska Furniture has the lowest price so that you never have to second guess any of their offerings in there. You always know that they're the lowest and they got the best price, period. Data. He also just happens to own the largest car dealership in the world, which he also just happens to own the second largest real estate brokerage in the world. If you buy a house, you're probably going to buy a vehicle, right? If you buy a house, what else you got to buy? Furniture. Monetizing data. He's just doing it a little bit old school. He also owns the transportation, like the trains and semi-trucks that also transport all of the, the, the furniture and everything else that he's doing. These guys got rich, 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 and are keeping their wealth from data. So when you say data is pretty damn important, I told you guys earlier, success leaves clues. These guys are the four most successful people in the world, just leaving a trail of breadcrumbs for us that we walk around ignoring. So here's the thing. If you own a business right now and you're not monetizing data, you're in big-ass trouble, right? What if you own a mortgage brokerage? Right now, Amazon is not in the mortgage game. You own a mortgage brokerage. And Amazon comes in and says, guess what? We're in the mortgage business in Las Vegas where your office is. What's your next move? Shit, I'm going to the insurance business. It's fucking game over for me. I learned a long time ago from Bugs Bunny. If you can't beat them, join them. I'm getting the hell out of there. I'm not going to compete with Jeff Bezos. He could bury me in ad costs. The only way that I have, I can't even sell him my business if I haven't collected data because my business is worthless. Why? Because he's about to fucking crush me. The only way that I've even got an exit plan as a business owner is to sell the data to Amazon that I've collected from my personal customers as a way of waving the white flag and trying to get some money on the way out of the market. That's real shit. So think about that from a business owner's perspective. Right now, here's the problem. Most business owners have a website that they had made 10 years ago. And they paid ten dollars or $20,000 for it, and it hasn't brought them a single customer, so it's a huge regret to them. I spent all this money on this damn website, and it doesn't do anything. I thought I was going to get a .com URL, and I was going to be rich. Damn it. It didn't happen for them. So what do they do? Most business owners ignore the problem. Damn Cole yesterday. Cole, you in here? You stole my old man and dog sitting on the front porch <laughs> story yesterday. And, I, and, and I, as soon as he said, I was like, man, he saw me say that at Billy Jean's event. Damn it, he done took that from me and fucked my speech up this afternoon. <laughs> but so... The thing is, most business owners, the, the website isn't painful enough for them to make a move yet, so they just ignore it, and they don't pay any attention to it. They send out direct mailers, or they're doing whatever the case. But here's the thing. Write this down. There's 7 million, and this is where the business comes in. I'm, I'm giving you guys some facts before I tell you this. There's 7 million business owners in America alone. I know there's lots of people from countries all over the world, and so I don't know the stats there, but there's 7 million in America alone. I have access to 70,000 plus people who build websites. These are people that are professional sales funnel website builders. Everybody in here know what a sales funnel is? So a website basically says, here's my contact information, hit us up if you need us, right? That's what most websites for businesses do. A sales funnel says, here's an offer in exchange for your information, I'll give you whatever it is that I'm offering so that you're collecting data. Right? So most business owners are stuck with a website that's old, it's antiquated, it's outdated. People are going to their website and they don't even know that they're visiting or who they are because they're not collecting their data. And there's 7 million website, or 7 million business owners in America. What's one of the first things you do when you start a business? You go to GoDaddy or you go to Google Domains and you buy a domain, right? And you get a website set up. That's how you know you're officially in business. I got my LLC papers and a website. And if you're real good, maybe business cards. That's how you get set up, right? So think about this. These guys, 10 years ago, probably paid anywhere from 10000 to 20000 for their existing website that does them absolutely no good. Does them absolutely no good. And they've spent the money and they've just moved on and they've given up, a lot of them. A lot of business owners aren't savvy on the internet like we are. And they've given up on their website. Until they find out that story that you can share with them about what are you going to do if Amazon comes into your marketplace and you don't have any data to sell them, what are you going to do? What's your exit strategy? Because most of them ain't thinking about that. But there's a unique opportunity, and especially in America right now, for people to make a shitload of money 
connecting these 7 million business owners to these 70,000 funnel makers. And you think, where are these 7 million business owners? They're on Facebook. They're on Instagram. They're in Facebook groups. They're in LinkedIn groups. There's referrals that are out there. They're everywhere. And think about this. If they're used to paying ten to $20,000 for a website, you could slide in there and pitch them $2,500 for a sales funnel. You can have one of these 70,000 funnel makers that we have set you up for 500 bucks, which leaves you with how much profit from making that sale? How much? I know, I know it's late in the afternoon, but y'all got math with me. How much? $2,000 from one sale that you didn't have to do shit but connect two people. One sale that you didn't have to do shit but connect two people. Now, I own a company called Phone Sites. We make uh, landing page software. It's not like ClickFunnels. I know a lot of you guys know ClickFunnels. That stuff's awesome. We use ClickFunnels in our business. But it's very complicated. It's very hard to get set up, and there's lots of moving parts to it and everything else. So we created a simple solution for business owners called Phone Sites. You can build a website, a sales funnel, from your mobile device in less than 10 minutes with zero tech skills whatsoever. Zero. Doesn't matter if you're 70 years old or seven years old. If you've never coded a website, if you have no idea, my shit's so easy that you can build an entire sales funnel in 10 minutes, follow up and everything. We've got automatic texts that go out, automatic emails that you set up, drag and drop, super easy. The reason why I share that with you is these guys will build a funnel for you for 500 bucks after you've collected the money, allowing you to profit $2,000 or more per sale. I personally sell the funnels for $6,000. Guess how much more it cost me to get that funnel made for six thousand than at twenty five hundred? Zero. It's still five hundred bucks. I just made fifty five hundred instead of twenty five hundred. Same amount of effort, same amount of thing, and it still sounds like a hell of an idea because you paid, Mister Business Owner, you paid ten thousand dollars for a bullshit website that's not doing you any good. Whereas I can come in for six thousand dollars and you can start generating leads from the website that I build within a matter of minutes, and it's tax deductible. And as business owners find out about this and they start getting leads, what do they do? They start sending you referrals. Think about this. You could go to an entrepreneurial group inside of Facebook. And you could see the guys that are talking about their websites and their branding and everything else. And just simply reach out to them and offer them some value. Hey, have you ever thought about a sales funnel? Hey, have you ever heard about how the four richest dudes in the world right now are making money? Dude, so I saw you asking about a website. They're all over social media. Let me give you a story about one of my clients. You're going to love this. My client's name is Sid. Two years ago, Sid lived in Kentucky, and his wife cheated on him with his business partner, and they took all the money that was in the business account, and were going to run away together. Sid had a gun in his mouth. He was going to pull the trigger. I mean, it's, I've been some rock bottom shit. There's a saying in our office, like, Stuman's been to rock bottom with a jackhammer just to see how deep this shit really goes, you know? And I feel like I have, but, man, that's fucking rock bottom. You know, I mean, heart broke, best friend fucks you over, you got no money, no life, you live in Kentucky, I'm sure that's its own little issue. And, I mean, it's the fucking end of the world for this guy. And he said he got an alert on his phone, and he looked down, and he saw one of my ads pop up. And he said, man, I had the gun in my mouth, and I was just about to pull the trigger, and my phone made a noise, and it kind of startled me. And I looked down, and the message had an ad contained in it, and the ad was yours. And I watched it, and I listened to you cuss and yell. This is way, you know, a couple years ago when you could get away from that shit. Listen to you cuss and yell and everything else on there. And, man, I realized that I got to get my shit together. So he comes, and he starts this what we call the funnel closer business, right, where you're closing people to buy sales funnels from you. He starts this funnel closer business. This guy has no formal education. He, don't, he won't look you straight in the eye. And he knows that I say all this, so I'm not making fun of him. I love him a lot. And I'm just telling you the reality of this guy. He's not the smartest guy in the world. He's not the brightest star in the sky. None of that stuff. Just generally good-hearted dude from Kentucky, man, that was down on his luck. Found one of my ads. Says, you know what? I'm going to give this a shot. I'm going to do this. I'm going to give it a shot. It's been two years. Sid was flat broke with a gun in his mouth, and he's made $4.9 million from this shit in two years. He literally went from not having a dollar to his name to living in a penthouse in downtown Dallas, driving a Maserati, making millions of dollars. He just got engaged to his dream woman, one that won't leave him, one that won't fuck him over for his business partner. He's living his best life because of this. He's never ran an ad. He's never had to spend a dollar of his own money. 
He's done all this shit organically on social media by following that M3 method that I shared with you and reaching out to business owners saying, hey, I can help you. There's a better way than what you have right now. Four point, almost five million dollars, this guy. His life has changed. Think about that. In two years, what would five million dollars do in your life? I already got it and I know what it would still do for my life. I'll take five more any chance I get. Every chance I get, actually. <laughs> but think about that. I've got another guy, Matt Ganzak. He runs in an agency. I show him this model. I say, hey, man, this funnel closer model is better than what you have going right now. Matt turns around and starts charging people thirty dollars and $40,000 for his funnels that he sets up. He ends up getting an entire team. He ends up getting married. Marries a woman of his dreams. Lives in this huge house on the water in Florida. Uh, coincidentally drives a Maserati as well. His whole entire life's changed because he's followed that model. And the model's simple. It's how many times can you connect those 7 million business owners to our 70,000 funnel makers, and we have the 70,000 funnel makers in one spot. Sign up, log in, tell them what you want, put your order in, and they make it about 24, 48 hours later. Simple, all day long. Last year alone, this isn't even my main hustle. And last year alone, I made a half a million dollars just part-time doing this shit. I turned down more than I do because I don't have time to make the funnels and deal with it because I got other stuff going on uh, at this point in my career. It still made a half a million dollars last year from following this process. Travis, who's somewhere in the back of the room with his hand up back there, this is what he does for a living. He, he worked with me for about two years helping people set this funnel closer process up to the, so much to the point where he said, fuck it, I'm going to go do it myself. <laughs> Appreciate it, Ryan, but I'm out. I'm going to go do my own shit. You know, he's expecting a second baby girl, living in Las Colinas, life, living a dream life. You know, coming to events like this, doing life together. And I want the same thing for you. I really do. And I'm going to give you some stuff today that's going to help you put all this together. I'm going to give you the entire, and I won't call it a business in a box, but I'm going to give you an entire system that will help you do the same thing. Marshall, you know Sid. That's a real story, right? Travis, you know Ganzak. That's a real story, right? Travis, you know Travis. That's a real story. <laughs> These people's lives have been changed, and there's hundreds of them. I'm just telling you you know, the most famous ones from our story. I could sit up here all day long and tell you story after story. People who didn't believe that this was possible, but then go do it and find themselves making ten, fifteen, twenty thousand dollars $20,000 within two months. That's fucking life-changing money, even if you're already making ten, fifteen, twenty grand a month. Another ten, fifteen, twenty is life-changing. I've seen it happen time and time again. So here's what I've got. I've got a platform that teaches you exactly how to do this. It teaches you where the business owners are hiding, the scripts to talk to them, how to approach them, how to position the content for them, how to have the sales pitch, all that stuff in one place, an online university called Funnel Closer. I know what you're thinking. Oh shit, here comes the sales pitch. And you're right. I am going to sell you. As my friend Marshall always says, I'm gonna sell you and I came here to sell you today. I'm going to sell you on a new way of thinking. And I'm, if I've done my job correctly, I'm going to sell you on a way that you can enroll and get some education and some things that will absolutely change your life financially. And then I've still got a little bit of time left, so I'm going to close on some mindset shit where I told you you could live the perfect day every day. I haven't forgot that. Okay? So it's an online university where we teach you step-by-step step where the people are at, how to talk to them, all the process, we connect you with the 70,000 people who can do the back-end work, which means basically 70,000 people, you obviously don't need 70,000 people. But that also means there's not a waiting list. You don't have to wait forever to submit to some agency that might take two or three months to make this happen for you. We have a community of 800 people that help each other out, an entire mastermind of people who have been doing this for some six months, some a year. And man, it's like when you become one of us, dude, it's like welcome to the family because we know what's about to happen. Shit, you got Maserati in your future. <laughs> if we see the pattern over and over again, we know it's about to happen. We have some of our customers driving Rolls Royces and things like that from this program. I've had plenty of business owners that were successful making thirty, forty, fifty thousand dollars $50,000 a month drop what they were doing to join this program and have built six-figure-a-month businesses doing this. So we have a mastermind of people like that that are involved in this community that help as well. We have all the legal documents you need. 
I have done everything. I've got a hell of a lawyer. My lawyer, Micah Dortch, is one of my best friends. He's settled over $2.3 billion in law settlements. He has a few jets, living a big life, you know. We actually took one of his jets to go hog hunting out of a helicopter <laughs> a few months ago. Fucking Texas is awesome, right? And, uh, I mean, this is that, that kind of guy. So I had him personally draw up these documents. They cost me, I think it was $3,500, $5,000 to have all these documents drawn up to protect the people that are in this program. We want to make sure that when you deliver a website, you don't get stuck in uh, tech support, right? <laughs> That's like the worst thing ever. And we have a checklist and a way that we present it to these business owners so that you don't become check, uh, tech support. You literally make the transaction, collect your money, deliver the website, have them sign the waiver, and you're done. We do live events. One and two day live events where we have people come in and share their strategies. I'm there teaching what I'm doing and the latest moves. And the best part is we provide the software with phone sites. Make it fast, easy, painless. So here's the thing. I'm going to come back to this in about five minutes. I want you to think about this. But first... I'm going to walk you through an exercise that's going to absolutely rewire your mind real fast, okay? I'm going to walk you through this exercise. I just ask that you play along. There's no sense in, like, sitting there trying to be the cool person. I'm like, well, I ain't doing that shit, right? Like, if I can get up here on stage, if some of the other folks can get up here on stage, surely you can just play along for one minute, okay? So here's the thing. We're going to come back to this. If you want to know how mentally I overcame being poor, drug addicted, incarcerated, and everything else in order to get up here, figure out the things like this to help people make a lot of money, get my life together, have everything that I want. I literally wrote down what a perfect day would be like for me in 2010, and I lived that motherfucker like 80% of the time. And I got there using four things, and I'm going to share it with you. It's called the G-Code. It's four areas. If you'll live this routine every day of your life, in 30 days, your fucking life will be dramatically different for the better. G stands for greatness. If you want to be great, this is the code in life that works. And then we'll tie it back in to our uh, online academy here. The first one is gratitude. We have so much shit that goes on in our life. Right? Every morning when I wake up, I own five businesses. Every morning when I wake up, I know there's some shit in either my email, my inbox, my text message. I know there's some shit out there trying to get me. We call it the force of average. Anybody in here ever had a good month and then followed by a bad month? Ever meet the love of your life and then do something to fuck that up? Right? Ever get your dream job and then show up late? Right? All the shit that happens to us, it's not our fault. You see, the virus that's infected this world is called the force of average. And the force of average has one job and one job only, and that's to distract you. Because when human beings are focused, we become the most powerful things on the planet. Think about it. When you're in your zone, you're unstoppable, right? When you're at Josh, he was in his zone when he was setting up the shit for this event. He was fucking unstoppable. He, we pulled off some shit that nobody else has been able to do, right? When you're in the zone, you become unstoppable. The problem is most people think focus just means staring at something. If I just focus, eventually it'll come true. Focus is having vision and applied action to make that vision a reality. And so you got to know what to focus on every day. Because see, if the force of average is here to keep you distracted so that you're not fo uh, focused, because that way you won't be as powerful, then it's your job to know what to focus on to make sure that the force of average can't stop you. You guys feeling me? Okay. So there's four areas that we have to focus on every single day in order to beat this force of average that's coming up against us. Because fuck average. Any of y'all want to be average? I never met an average person driving a Ferrari. I never met an average person living in a mansion. I never met an average person at an event like this. I met some people who might have average circumstances, but they're not average people, if you know what I mean. Right? So the first thing we got to do is we got to focus on our gratitude. There's some shit that's going to fuck us up every day. And you know what? If you're not thankful for what you have now, you'll never attain what you want next. So the first thing I do every single morning is I wake up. I pull out Evernote on my phone, and I open it up, and I write the day's date in a note, and I write five things I'm grateful for. 
Usually it's my wife. I wake up next to her. I miss her since I'm out of town and she's at home with the kids. But usually it's my wife. Maybe it's for this event. Yesterday it was for Josh. Yesterday it was for the staff. Five things. What I'm doing is first thing in the morning. Not after I use the restroom, not after I drink water, not after I go to the gym. First thing in the morning, I'm forcing my mind to wake up and look to be grateful for the day. Do you see how powerful that is? I'm forcing my mind to find five things to appreciate before I do anything else for the day. That's how you get your day started off right. Then what I do is I listen to something motivational. For you guys, I recommend the Rewire podcast. But for me, sometimes it's Ed Milet. Sometimes it's Grant Cardone, whoever it is that you're into. Eric Thomas, I love him as well. I listen to these guys because I want positivity and gratitude going through my brain first thing in the morning before I get to work and the force of average tries to punch me in the face. The second thing that we got to work on is our genetics. Not just working out either. We got to make sure that we're eating the right stuff. Nothing is going to be worse for your life than if you spend your entire life working and earning millions of dollars only to give it back to hospitals who don't give a fuck about you. Only to have to spend it on pills and insulin and chemotherapy and all the shit because you didn't take care of the one temple we were trusted with here. I'm telling you, it doesn't do you any good to make money if you're just going to give it all away because you don't take care of your health. I have a 73-year-old ex-father-in-law who I'm still good friends with. And he said, if there was one thing I could change, I would have never stopped working out after 50. I figured I was old enough to where I didn't have to anymore. Now that I've lived to be 73, fuck, I wish I'd have kept working out. Right? Always make sure you take care of your genetics. For me, first thing when I wake up, gratitude, and then I go hit the gym. I hate the gym. I fucking hate it. My trainer, this asshole, he's always laughing at me when I'm doing fucked up shit. Right? I hate that shit. So you know what? I know that I'm never going to feel like working out. So instead, what I do is I just go work out, and I'll feel good afterwards. I just do it. But I know I got to get it out of the way first thing in the morning. I know it because if, if it's on my brain all day long, it'll drive me nuts, and I won't do it. So I got to make sure of my genetics. When it comes to eating... Instead of eating the whole hamburger, I might eat half, three quarters. Instead of eating a whole large fry, I might just have two or three fries. Wait, most of us guys, especially, we like scarf our food down. Especially like me. Shit, I was in prison for three years. You know, fuck, dude, I'm like used to eating everything on my plate before some big dude asked me for my cornbread and shit. Right? Turns out if you just wait a little bit, in between scarfing all your food down, you'll actually feel full and you don't require as much food. I've been able to lose almost 30 pounds in the last six months, just not changing my diet, just not eating as much because it slowed down a little bit. The next thing is your grind. So we're going to focus on being grateful every day because gratitude is abundance, right? Anytime that you're angry, it's because you're scared of something. Anytime you're angry, it's because you have fear. And fear is distracting. But when you're grateful, and you're focused on being grateful and you're focused on having a mindset of gratitude, you become unstoppable. You, don't, you become an abundant thinker. You got to make sure you take care of your genetics. Third is your grind. That's your job. Right now, a lot of people say shit like, oh, you got to have a balanced life. You got to balance. You got to get a work, life, home balance. You got to have all that. I mean, fuck that. I was with Tim Grover a couple months ago. You know what he said? He said, fuck balance. Because a scale is balanced at zero and nobody in their life wants to be a fucking zero. Not Michael Jordan, not Kobe Bryant. Nobody wants to be a fucking zero, so fuck balance. Right? Think about that. I don't want to be a zero. Right? So instead, we know that this is going to be the thing that takes the majority of our time. Right? If, and so we know that if I got to work 10, let's just simple math. If I got to work 60 hours a week and I got to sleep at least six hours a night, there's 168 hours in a week. That's a fucking 100 hours right there gone just between work and sleep. I can't balance that out. So instead, what I've got to do is i got to make sure the time counts with my family. See me, I wake up at 5 in the morning, go to the gym about 6, get in the office about 8.30, go home about 5.30 or 6. My kids go to sleep at 8. I've only got two or three hours to be close with them by the time I arrive home. But I'm not on my phone. I'm not staring at the TV. I'm playing football with them. I'm making the time count. They may say dad wasn't always around, but when he was around, he was down. Right? That's important. Same with my wife. When we put our kids to sleep. I got about an hour to spend with my wife, us alone, right? Usually doing fun stuff. And so, like, I got an hour to make shit count, right? It may only take me 10 minutes, but I got an hour. <laughs> I got an hour to make shit count, right? And I'm right there with her in the moment. I can't say, hey, I'm going to spend 10 hours with you and 10 hours at work. Fuck, what I, what, the other four hours, I'm going to need more sleep than that. So balance is bullshit. But you make the time count, Okay. So on your grind, if you're going to be at work 10 hours, a lot of people stay at work 10 hours and they only did four hours worth of work. 
We have a saying in my office, 48-7. I do two days worth of work in one day, seven days a week. That's why people can't catch me. I'm out working them all, 48-7. But while I'm there, I'm focused on it. I'm not distracted. I'm not searching social media. I'm focused on making this happen. The last thing is your group. This is a big one. You got to take care of your group. Got to focus on your group every day. That's your employees. That's your referral partners. That's your family. That's your friend. A lot of you right now think you're a good friend and you're a shitty friend. When's the last time you called up a group of friends and set up a meeting with no strings attached to it? You didn't want to sell them something. You didn't want nothing from them. You just offered them all a fucking steak dinner. Thank you for being my friend. I do that once a month with my friends. Sometimes more, especially traveling around. I get to call people in every city I go to. Hey, friend, I'm glad you're here. Yesterday, maybe Daniel's. Daniel, are you in the, op- uh, in the audience here? Daniel Blue? There he is. He lives here in Vegas. He's a friend of mine. I call him. I said, hey, friend, I'm going to be in Vegas. You want to hang out with us for a couple days? Because I'm going to go out of my way to take care of my group. Because guess what? In the event that I didn't take care of my genetics and the doctor tells me it's my time to expire, these are the people that are going to matter the most. The rest of that shit ain't going to matter. So most of you think you're a good friend. You think you're a good mother. You think you're a good daughter. You think you're a good son. You think you're a good brother. But you have to really ask yourself, when's the last time you made the effort to be that person? I make it every day because I make my time count. The last thing before I do every night before I go to sleep is I reopen that Evernote where I wrote down the things I'm grateful for and I write down everywhere I won for the day. The last thing I do before I close my eyes, I write down everything that I won at the day. Played football with my kids, that's a win. Made a sale today, that's a win. Avoided some confrontation, that's a win. Handled some shit that went wrong and turned it around and went right at work, that's a win. I put all that shit, you know why? Because I wake up grateful and I go to sleep a fucking winner every night of the week for 500 days now. I've been doing this. And I can tell you after 30 days, what this does is this focus, this gets you to be focused on being grateful. It gets you to focus on your wins. And what you focus on, you get more of. I just gave you the blueprint to cheat life, to fucking beat the force of average. It's this. It's the G code. It's that simple. You become undistractable. You become unstoppable. You guys feeling me on this? I'm telling you, I just, I had to drink a lot of ayahuasca to figure this shit out, right? I figured this shit out. It's working for me. If I can stand up here and tell you that less than 11 years ago, I had $25 in my name and two of the worst things you can have on your criminal record, and I still am trusted by millions. This is my event. Jet and I, we did this. Josh and I did this event. We're trusted by millions of people. Every month, three to four million people see our shit that know us, like us, and trust us. If I can overcome that stuff following this right here, anybody in this room can. Now, the last thing I'm going to share with you. Thank you. So I believe you should be focused on this. This is where the money's at. I know there's been a lot of great programs here. And I know there's a lot of great information in the other programs that some of you bought that fit along perfectly with this as well. Here's the deal. We sell this for $19.97 all day, every day. All day, every day. Four or five times a day. This mastermind, our typical mastermind is $2,500 a year. It costs me, we'll say conservatively, $3,500 to get these legal documents drawn up and put in place. Our live events typically cost about $500 to show up for our funnel, of, uh, funnel closer events. And phonesites.com is $47 a month or $447 per year. Okay? So that's everything that you need to, to go out and know the scripts, the places that they're hiding, how to talk to them, every single detail that you could possibly need and the support full-time, 24-7, in order to go out and match up as many of those 7 million business owners with as many of those 70,000 people that we have on our back end that's as simple as filling out an order form for you. All this, which is, I don't know, two, three, four, five, six, eight, nine, $10,000 worth of value for this event only. After this, it expires. You'll find out. It's not a gimmick. I just don't want the public to be access to this. You can get all of this for $9.97 today. Here's the other thing. The first five of you that decide, don't get up yet. The first five of you that decide to do this with me, you can be my personal guest to the mastermind tonight. No phone, but you can party with me all night long, right? Or whoever else is in there. You may not even, you may have to go to me to get to who you want, but I can still get you in there. You know what I mean? So here's the thing. When people ask me for autographs on my books all the time, like why? It just makes it worth less. 
And so if you want to be one of those five people, you come in there as well. The next hundred people that sign up for this program, I'm going to get you not only set up in our program with everything else that you need, I'm going to throw a special event to help you guys get jump started at this in my office in Dallas. I'm going to throw a one-day event to show you guys and help you. I'll get my whole crew there and everything to get you guys jump started at this. There's a huge need for this in the marketplace. This is a gold mine just sitting out there. Sid, simple Sid, I call him. Four point, what, it's almost $5 million, $4.9 million in two years. And I think everybody in this room has a greater chance of actually making this shit happen than Sid. So what we're going to do right now, because i got 23 seconds left, is I'm going to go out in the hallway with Christine and with Travis, who's in the back. If you guys have a couple questions for me or whatever related to this, please, there's going to be people that want to buy this, so don't waste their time. Just come up and hang out. We can talk later on that. But I'm going to go back here. I'm going to be at the back of the room. I'll answer your questions. We'll get you signed up. We'll get you the phone sites uh, login. We'll get you log into the platform and everything else. And, dude... I bet tonight, if you go around and network with enough people, you'll be able to make a sale of funnel closures to somebody in this room. There's somebody in this room right now who has a website that needs a sales funnel. Like, you can make maybe more than one sale from this room tonight. I'm telling you, you have all the opportunity in the world. That's my time. They're over here flashing the clock at me to get off the stage. I appreciate you guys being in here. I'm going to go to the back of the room. We're going to take a 15-minute break, and then we're going to be back in the room for the next speaker. If you have any questions for me or Christine, just meet us in the back of the thing. Thank you guys very much.